With the ever-increasing governmental focus on car manufacturers reducing emissions, necessitating Ferrari to move ever closer to that full-blown electric supercar, is the 488 Pista the last true special edition Ferrari? Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome to the Ferrari 408 Pista. Special edition Ferraris began with the 360 Challenge Stradale. Downstream from the Challenge Stradale came the 430 Scuderia, then the 16M, then the 458 Speciale and the 458 Speciale Aperta, then the 488 Pista and of course downstream the 488 Pista Spider. The 488 Pista is a track derived lightened version of the 488 GTB. Now, Ferrari state that around 3,500 pistas were, went into production during 2019 to 2020. In addition, in 2018, Ferrari provided a Pista Pilotti. Now, Pista Pilotti is a tailor-made version or edition of the 488 Pista and was only ever offered to Ferrari racing drivers and only 40 of those were ever made. The 488 Pista is the track-derived version of the 488 GTB and as such is substantially lighter. It's around 90 kilograms lighter than the GTB, coming in at 1,495 kilograms curb weight. Now, this particular Pista is specified in Grigio alloy external paintwork with a full Alcantara Grigio interior. So in effect, a gray Alcantara interior. Now that gray Alcantara interior that we'll show you in a minute was a five to six thousand pound additional option. Now the key design element that separates away the 408 Pista from the 408 GTB is of course the S-duct. Now the S-duct is designed to give additional downforce. It provides an additional 20% downforce over and above the 408 GTB. And this S-duct goes all the way through coming out at the top of the front splitter. This because it allows airflow to come forward above the front splitter over the front of the car, pushing down the front of the wheels and the front of the car harder down onto the road, as I said, by an additional 20% downforce. That's quite impressive. And for me personally, I much prefer this design with the S-duct over, over and above the standard 488 GTB front end. I always thought that when looking down on the, for, on the front of the 488 GTB, it looked like there was a handrail in front. Of course, they've totally done away with that design in incorporating this air stack. It looks a lot more, it, it, it's a, it's a, to me, it's a lot better design language. Now, our regular viewers may recognize this pista because this pista was evident on our driving tour across Europe. Now, I'm going to talk you through some of the options that were specified on this particular 488 Pista, but I'm not going to go into any great detail because it's quite a long list. So I'm just going to pick out the salient points. So first of all, the front section was optioned in carbon fibre. Now, the Pista in general has full-blown all-round double wishbone suspension with coilover shocks. This is quite standard for these types of track-focused cars. You had carbon fibre side blades, side aerodynamic blades. They were optioned as an extra. Moving around to the back of the car, the whole rear diffuser is an option, is an additional carbon fibre specification option. And moving around to the front of the car, the front section, these front, these front spoiler sections were optioned in carbon fibre as well, in addition to the AFS lighting system. Let's talk about the engine. This is a 3.9 litre twin turbo V8 longitudinally mounted producing 710 brake horsepower and 568 pound foot of torque. Now that 568 pound foot of torque is provided around 3000 RPM which is very low in the rev range and I've noticed that just driving the car to this location it's got a lot more low end grunt than my 458 Spider, say for example. Now much to the angst of many a, a 488 Pista owner this engine was also provided in the downstream F8 Tributo and F8 Spider model. That caused much annoyance to Pista owners who believed that they were getting a very unique engine configuration in their Pistas when in an actual fact it was provided in the downstream model. Now this particular engine is derived from the 488 Challenge car and as such has a lightened crankshaft, lightened flywheel, titanium comrods and lightened pistons and it also has carbon fibre plenum chambers. First of all you cannot miss 
the plethora of carbon fiber on the interior. Look at these door cards, these polished door cards. They look absolutely awesome, absolutely incredible. These sill covers in carbon fiber as well, which encapsulate the area where the rear engine cover lift is to, to open up the, the rear engine cover. In addition, um, some of the additional options that provided for this car was a full charcoal Alcantara interior. Now that is an incredible option and very expensive. This option was around five to six thousand pounds just to add the option of a full Alcantara charcoal interior. As you can see, charcoal seats with a blue center stripe and white stitching to, uh, to um, contrast against the charcoal Alcantara. You've got Alcantara dash here, which actually looks a little bit blue in this, in this, in this sunlight, but it's actually charcoal color. Steering wheel, obviously the usual uh, carbon fiber steering wheel with the LED lights uh, at the top to show the red light for the, for the rev range. The usual configuration, Manatino, your wipers, engine start, stop, and it's the engine stop as well in this case because you've got keyless entry on these 488 cars. Um, you've got the center bridge there, so you've got launch, auto and reverse options on the center bridge. The center bridge in carbon fiber, which is an additional option too. Also, because this is a track focused car, you don't usually have carpets. So this has been optioned with Alcantara carpets too. Um, now it's not full blown carpets, but you've got the Alcantara mats that sit on top of the um, like the aluminium base plate, which is used um, as standard. So you wouldn't normally have these Alcantara mats in the car. Pretty impressive interior. Being a Pista as well, you've got the, these mats, these, these webbing um, to provide storage locations in the door cards. And you've got similar, when you lift up these beautiful carbon fiber seats, race seats, you've got also similar, similar matting um, to be able to provide storage locations in the rear of the car. So not fantastic. So not fantastic for luggage storage, but you wouldn't really expect that. Most of your storage luggage compartment is in the front of the car. And incidentally, by the way, the front is full blown carbon fiber. So when you lift up the front cover, it feels really, really light, as is the rear engine cover is also carbon fiber, really, really light and has a Lexan rear glass. Very impressive. It's a beautiful interior. Now from the 408 model onwards, it's keyless entry. So you have a location for your key, your key, your cardless key. So you literally just put the item inside the car, you make sure it's within the range of the internal system, and then you hold your foot on the brake and you press the good old red button, start and stop button. So driving the 488 Pista. visibility is good from the A pillars forwards. From the B pillars, not very good to be honest. The B pillar is quite thick. When you're looking to the rear using the door mirrors, a third of the door mirror real estate space is taken up with the, the engine air intake for the intercoolers. So the jury's out on that look. I'm not too keen on that look and it makes it look a lot wider than it actually is. But I've, I've always much prefer, I'm so used to the clean lines of the 458 that those massive intercoolers on the rear haunches to me just don't, don't look good but each to their own I guess. If you've enjoyed the video so far guys please make sure you give the video a like, very important for the channel and think about subscribing, it's very important for us to move the channel forwards. Back to the video. With regards to rear visibility, 
you've got the Lexan rear screen, which is you've got a Lexan rear engine cover screen, which of course is lightened glass, and it's very slanted, so it's at a hell of a rake um, on the so it's on the engine. The engine cover is at a hell of a rake, so the glass is at a hell of a rake. So even though the glass is quite long or quite wide, because it's quite raked. The visibility isn't very good for the rear view mirror at all and to add to the issue you've got the rear bumper which has the rear spoiler lip on the on the on the rear bumper section and that takes away about a third of the rear view visibility so you've got a slit anyway because of the rake of the rear engine cover screen and then you've got the rear spoiler taking up about a third of that slit so it's not great now this car's got rear parking sensors and a rear camera, so that does resolve a lot of the problems. First impressions driving, feels bloody awesome. The power delivery is very linear and it just goes like a bat out of hell. Down and the same is 568 pound foot of torque, and that torque is delivered at 3000 rpm. And you can really feel that torque really kick in. And even though, like the, the legacy cars, the legacy turbo cars, where you're, they're very boosty and you feel that boost really come in and really hit you hard, something you know, like the F40, say for example, I've never driven an F40, they're, they're very boosty. This isn't like that, it's a very linear delivery of power. It's feels like a naturally aspirated car but it feels like a bloody it feels like a bloody fast naturally aspirated car very clever engineering from Ferrari very very clever and, and the, like I say the power delivery is very smooth and very linear and it, it just freaking surges it's like somebody's pushing you from behind with extreme force. Like I say, it feels like a naturally aspirated car, but a very powerful naturally aspirated car. As I detailed earlier, five to six thousand pound option on this interior because it's got a full charcoal Alcantara interior, which is very plush and very nice. Even though this is a, a track focused car, being a Pista, you don't really notice it that much. Probably the Alcantara mats make a hell of a lot of difference there and they overcome that really stripped out feel. And yes, you can definitely hear bits and pieces hitting the underneath of the car because a lot of the a lot of the sound deadening is removed uh, because it's lightened. It's 1495 kilograms. It's 90 kilograms lighter than 488 GTB, so um, they've saved that weight somehow. Uh, obviously the carbon fiber all over the place, carbon fiber door cards, etc. Um, helps to improve, helps to provide that without sound deadening and also without car. Pits, um, and just the Alcantara door mat and, and just the Alcantara floor mats that um, helps to reduce weight. Steering is heavier than the 458 which is quite surprising which actually feels good it feels better. Gear change is instant so the dual clutch gearbox is fantastic even though we're pushing on a bit now, the pickup and driving slow on this car is a lot more linear and a lot easier than the 458. Christ, it's bloody fast. <laughs> saying this but the exhaust note is shite shite in comparison to a 458 I should say on at, at, at slow speeds the exhaust sounds good 
and this remember this is a 488 piece so it doesn't have particulate filters but it's obviously the sound is limited and, and pretty much boned by the turbos but I'd say it's a pretty good trade-off taking into account what those turbos deliver but look at that it's just friggin I mean crazy fast gear changes bang 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 I would say that the gears seem shorter but they're probably not it's just that the bloody thing is so crazy fast they've designed the gear change to be very very mechanically instant so they they partly remove the feeling and it's it's just functional bang 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 on the gear changes and this feels a little bit like that so it feels like it's got a bit of the german engineering to really kick the gears in very quickly but you've got that emotional attachment to the gear change as well because you can feel it's, it's just got that enough of a kick to give you that feedback to give you that emotional connection now remember the 48 pista has the brakes in effect of the la ferrari so they are bloody good brakes maybe not as grabby as i'd expect them to be but still linear in their braking capability the acceleration of the car and the drivability of the car at slow speeds is substantially improved over the 458 the 458 you had no sneeze factor on the on the accelerator you just touch the accelerator and it starts moving you forward and that means also with the with the software configuration in the gearbox in the in the dual clay clutch gearbox in the seven speed gearbox it also means that um, you have that jerkiness at slow speeds in the 458 but this is a lot smoother substantially improved massively improved i would say um, not to say the 458 was undrivable or was a major problem at slow speeds and sometimes you don't really notice these things until you get into an improvement into an improved car and this is obviously a progression a progression this obviously is a progression over and above the 458 being the next downstream car and of course being the track version of the downstream car so you'd expect it to be improved and it is it's really noticeable i'm driving the pista now in town and there's no jerkiness at all it's very very linear it's almost like it's got a uh, a legacy style old auto gearbox in it um, which is very impressive if you're in auto mode and you start changing gear using the paddles it automatically switches you into manual mode it uh, unlike the 458 where in the 458 if you start using the paddles and you're in auto mode it starts flashing the auto display section in the in the gear change window but it doesn't switch it into manual mode it sort of is in auto mode still and sort of thinks okay maybe you're going to change gear still and if you are then we'll let you change gear but if you don't then we'll still keep it in auto mode so it still really stays in auto mode whereas with the pista um i assume with the 488 with the standard 488 gtb as soon as you start changing gear manually using the paddle shifts it switches into manual mode now i think that is an improvement i much prefer that you don't have to toggle the the you don't have to toggle the auto button which is in the bridge in the center console bridge it automatically switches into manual mode and i much prefer that so well done ferrari that's an improvement
located in the rear brake light on the rear diffuser when you're using the rear when it, when you're using the rear view camera it's very low to the ground it's not as good a position it, its location isn't as good a position as it is in the 458 where it's higher up because it's placed in the rear bumper or near the um, or above the rear number plate in the on the 458 with it being placed so low on that rear brake light section which is supposed to emulate the look of the F1 cars it, it doesn't give a great perspective the perspective is too low so you don't get a good perspective of where objects are so now how does this car make me feel? I'd say adrenalised excitement <laughs> when you're on it you can put it around smooth as anything around town doesn't have that urgency that the 458 has at slow speeds it's nice and smooth nice smooth gear changes no jerkiness but when you're on it holy shit it's it fast it just punches you down the road around the roads like I said the steering feels a bit slower so it provides that so it provides better confidence it's not slow enough where it hinders you in turning corners and navigating around sharp bends but it just removes the, that slight edginess maybe that you have with the 458 one of these I don't think I'd be too upset Ability, the maneuverability and everything towards that goal of driving the car so the linear delivery of power the ferocious linear delivery of power I should say maneuverability of the car the turn in the slightly slower steering over the 458 the better steering feel a little bit heavier weighting in the steering over the 458 which I feel is an improvement you, you could definitely feel the road better the brakes definitely better, the LaFerrari brakes are definitely a vast improvement over the 458, so definitely like the brakes. The agility of the car to turn in and to stay planted on the road, and the way how the traction control systems, the electronic systems, how they support you, they don't aggressively kick in. The speed of gear change and that little that edge where you still get that engagement with the gear change it's not too engineered like in the Porsches in the Porsche GT3s you still get that kick but it's incredibly fast the gear change I'm not quite sure what the actual speed of gear change is but it's a lot faster than the 458 and the 458 isn't slow so that's the pros pretty much all the key things that you need to love about a supercar the dislikes and the negatives the rear spoiler that's attached to the top of the rear bumper that takes away a third of your limited view also with regards to the styling of the car I don't like those intercoolers on I don't like the air intakes for the intercoolers on the rear haunches I just 
Yeah, it's a styling thing and I don't like it. I love the front styling and I think that the piece is a much improved styling over the standard 488. The introduction of the S-Lect into the front styling of the car is a vast improvement over the 488 GTB. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. We've touched on it a little bit already. The sound. You can't get away from it guys, the sound is muted. There's twin turbos really mute the exhaust sound. Putting a, a tuned exhaust on it probably will improve things, but you're still going to have an, a substantial impact to the sound of the car because of those large turbos. You can't get away from it. It does not sound as good as the naturally aspirated cars and yes, as good as the 458. It is what it is. It sounds okay, it sounds fine, and I'd say it sounds a lot better than the F8 because the F8 has particulate filters, these don't. But you can't get away from it. It doesn't sound as good as, as the 458. And I'd say it doesn't sound anywhere near as good as the 296. So the engineering, the exhaust, the ergonomics of the exhaust engineering that they've done on the 296 is pretty ingenious to be able to get the sound that they do out of that V6. So I hope you've enjoyed that adrenalized review of the 488 Pista. I certainly have. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Really enjoyed this time with the 488 Pista. Thanks very much to the owner. Very, very much appreciated. Take it easy, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.